Uh, someone found Hootbold already. <laughs> I, uh, our, uh, lore guy made sure I had to use my Swedish chef voice when I say the name of that town. Hootbold. Hey everyone, I'm Rob, aka Graculin with MMORPG.com, and this is Way Back Wednesday. This week, we're covering Lord of the Rings Online, and we're getting a first look at the Riders of Rohan expansion, which is due out sometime in September. I have the fortune to have with me Aaron Campbell, the senior producer for Lord of the Rings Online. Uh, Aaron, would you like to take a minute and introduce yourself, sir? Sure, I'd be glad to. Uh, so let's see, I've been with Lotro now since uh, 2006, since well before launch. Uh, and had the great fortune to, you know, work my way through in, in this uh, massive game uh, and this incredible fan base uh, as we build Middle Earth. Uh, so it's, an, it's just an awesome experience. Uh, we're on our fourth expansion right now, uh, which is Riders of Rohan, uh, and we're showing off Mounted Combat, which is just a brand new combat system. Uh, it, it really changes the game here, uh, and it's, it's going to be very exciting for us. So. Uh, we're psyched to be able to uh, stream that out and give an inside peek to beta. All right. Well, as you guys can see, I'm right here in the center of the screen, and I'm on one of the new war steeds. I had the fortune yesterday to actually get in and run around for a little bit, and I'd have to say that I'm definitely not a pro, so we're going to start off by doing some of the introductory riding uh, quests. And I imagine, just talk to this guy right here? Talk to that guy right there. You got it. All right. So you wish to be trained in the ways of riding a horse to war, eh? <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I've trained hundreds of riders over the years. I didn't know you had Canadians in this game. Though a few as experienced in battle as yourself, I must admit. Come, let us begin. All right. Now we're warping off somewhere. You get your, your own personal uh, training grounds here. Oh. No races today? <laughs> no group races. We'll bring those in next. So I've earned myself a fine steed of Rohan at which the ride forth finally done. So I need to accelerate and decelerate with the forward and backward movement keys, hold the mouse look button, and look in the direction I wish to turn. You can also turn using the left-right turn keys, and the faster you go, the slower you turn. So down to make tighter turns. Does he give me a mount, or I just use the one I've already got? You use the one you got. Alrighty. So we've got you all set up with a uh, a nicely outfitted medium steed there, wearing the uh, the armor of the Raven. Uh, it's a great look, uh, and some uh, a banded tail actually. You kind of mix and match some of the pieces there. I don't know that mounting updated. I think I can fix that for you. Yeah. I'm running the wrong way, people. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Hey, somebody keep going. So one of the things I did notice is, you know, the actual gravity of your horse. I guess it wouldn't be gravity is the right word, but the uh, momentum of your horse does carry you through the turns. And the uh, faster you're running, the heavily armored your horse is the wider your turns are, so... Yep. There we go. We completed the first quest. No, I mean, one of the most important parts of Mount of Combat here is just that feeling of speed and momentum. You know, if you're on this massive war steed loaded down with uh, uh, mail and barding, you're not going to just stop on a dime, right? You're going to have a bit of a turn. You're going to have a bit of a curve. And you may go running into a wall or two. <laughs> I just about rode my <laughs> riding instructor down. <laughs> So, so here, here's a pro tip for you. Uh, if you want to stop quickly, just hit uh, uh, double tap on S. What business have you with the road here? All right, I know some of the people are kind of like, why are you riding a horse? Well, we're, we're just doing the introductory courses, and we are going to get to more of the mounted combat. We're going to try to go out and see some of the, one of the war packs. Not the war packs. War bands that are out war there. War bands yeah. that are out there. All right. For those of you guys that have been sitting around for a while and said that the stream hasn't started yet, you might want to refresh your browser because the stream actually has gone up yet. And sometimes it just doesn't catch for some people. All righty. 
He has not. Oh, I gotta pass blue flags. All right. Yeah. So you can do all that from the back of your mount too. No need to dismount between rounds. Yeah, I can. So this will be one of the earliest series of quests that players are encountering when they first pick up their war steed, right? We're basically saying, hey, get out there, learn a little bit of the movement, get a sense of this thing. Uh, and, you know, we'll have a couple challenges for it in you as well. And looks like the little wickets you have to run through are getting smaller. Oh, apparently I missed a few. <laughs> oh, he's an unforgiving trainer. Yeah, very much so. I'm actually trying to figure out which ones I missed. I think at the end I just didn't notice it or something. Let's see. It's that last one. It's I'm missing that. No, it doesn't look, appear to be timed. It just appears that you actually have to do it. It doesn't appear to be tied, it just appears that you actually have to do it in one pass. And this last flag, there's I see the one against the fence uh -huh. post here, but I don't see... Yeah, I guess you just had to get closer to it. Now I have to pass all of them. Oh, I failed. Can I go uh -huh. back? You could. You want to get out and see a little bit more of Rohan itself? Sure. Why don't we go ahead and show the guys that? As interesting right. and fun as this is, I can see where they might be like, <laughs> he's running circles. All what right. What are you doing, man? All right. Challenge later. Uh, Lotra, you can actually throw questions in the chat as we go and uh, we can see them and if, if Aaron's able to answer them we will if there's something that we Absolutely. can't then we won't so but it doesn't hurt you know to try so go ahead and ask one of the things I wanted to point out that I actually talked about yesterday with this uh, DX11 client is that the water oh he's dragging me across the world here and we're seeing it <laughs> uh, the water in the cloud effects are just uh, really very stunning. I don't know if it's coming across in the stream, but the graphics in this game, you, you would never guess in some of these areas that, you know, they're five years old. Uh, we just rebuilt them last week, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so I'm bringing you out to uh, an area called the Wold. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the opening areas in Rohan itself. Um, and, you know, we've just opened up the beta server here, so we're likely to run into players out here as well who are adventuring. Yeah, you get a sense of the map there. Uh, so, Eastern Plains of Rohan here is a, really a vast space. Uh, you know, we're talking about landscape that's easily twice the size of Moria, which was, as anybody who's played through the game will tell you, it was a, a pretty big place. Uh, and, you know, it, it's one of the sort of, you know, iconic spaces in, in Lord of the Rings lore, right? We're talking about, you know, the breaking of the Fellowship. We're talking about uh, the Argonaut. We're talking about the edges of the, of the eaves of Fangorn Forest. Uh, you know, down right to um, basically uh, those spaces where you, you can think of uh, you know, the hunters, you know, uh, Gimli and Legolas and so on, like breaking out to, to, to free the trapped hobbits. So a lot of lore here. And then, hey, we have Rohirrim, and we have, you know, goblins and orcs and horrific things out on the landscape that need to be trampled. So I saw earlier that people were asking about the amount of combat, you know, what are the non-melee characters are going to do and uh, really what are the sure. melee characters going to do yep. if you see here when you are engaged with an enemy at a distance you will start to auto attack with your bow while it's not going to deal the most damage it, it does continue to keep you know damage on your target 
Yep, and actually in this case you're playing a hunter, so you're going to have a lot of ranged DPS as well. But, you know, you also have a skill where if you build up some speed, you get in close, uh, you can use that play open melee skill and just, you know, rip your opponent to shreds. This is uh, the play open that he's talking about right here. It's number six on your hot bar. Let's, let's swing out and around, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate what he was talking about. Uh, so we didn't have a line of sight. It's a kill shot. Should have been a powerful ranged attack. There we go. Uh, we can probably try, I don't know if we'll be able to try different armor layouts on the horses, but I don't think that we really have sure. different characters to show. By the way, we're actually on the live uh, beta server right now in Bull Roar, yep. so if you are on the server as well, you're more than welcome to hunt us down and find us and come say hello. Say hello, absolutely. So we're plus sign Holston, H-O-L-S-T-A-N, and plus sign Rowan. So if you can find us, we're more than willing to group with you. And Just outside Harwick in the world. Actually, I think we found uh, some other players here. So, okay, actually, this brings up a really good topic. We ran into a group of other players. Uh, I sure. know that you wanted to uh, talk about the fact that we can actually help one another and not either steal one another's creeps or, you know, not get credit for cooperative Yeah, well, play. specifically when we're dealing, so we have a whole new uh, class of mobs out here we call Warbands. Uh, and they're really these, you know, wandering groups, ravaging orcs and, and uh, goblins and others that are out there to... to you know, just destroy the Rohirrim way of life. Um, with those, we've set up a new system we call Open Tapping. So basically, you can get a quest from them, um, dig in and um, assist uh, your comrades in arms, play p other players maybe out there in the landscape, but you're not going to penalize them, or you're not stealing any of their stuff. Uh, you're going to be able to complete a quest, they'll be able to, able to complete a quest, you can all help each other out. And as you can see, we're looting the items, so there's no need to get off your horse and stop and pick up any kind of item that you may need. Absolutely. Don't want to slow it down. Unless you break for oak branches. <laughs> well, if you want to stop and, uh, and harvest. I, that, that is an addiction. I admit it. I've had the addiction. Oh, I don't have the skill <laughs> for that. No harvesting oak branches tonight. Poor Wolverine never oh. saw what happened. Exactly. Okay, so the quest to actually come out here and fight these warbands, where would the quest giver for... Well, you're going to get those actually as you're approaching one of those warbands. Okay. Uh, up here in the Wold, we're still in one of the early areas, so mm -hmm. players, a lot of players actually won't even be have their war steed yet in this area. Uh, okay. So I'll jump this, I can jump this a bit further down, we can see if we can pick up one of the warbands. That sounds good. As I'm running people down in the town here. <laughs> <laughs> Run away a horse. Let's see what we got. Pick you up in just a moment. One of the challenges of living in a massive multiplayer world. Hey, it's nighttime. Uh, okay, I just saw a question come across. It says, how is tanking possible with all the chaos you'll get with the mounted speed? Uh, mm -hmm. Different classes are going to play in different ways. Uh, tanks are going to be slower, and aren't they going to do more of like a CC function out here against these, or is that a different class? So Definitely, yeah. So I'm playing a Guardian right now, for example. Um, you can, I have a range of skills. I have some that are going to pull direct threat, right, so pull mobs towards me. Uh, but then there's a whole other class of skills that say, hey, um, you, buddy, ride next to me, right? You're going to force people to have a battlefield position. Uh, which 
is really good when you're mobile because all you can really do is control the battlefield, right? Uh, you're moving so quickly that you need to have some awareness and understanding of where folks are. Okay, so uh, I just got the quest. It's new quest, Warband. Yeah. The I'm not even going to try and say that name. The Hama. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> a, he's a big, nasty Uruk. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and he, he wants to chop your head off. Uh, I don't want to oblige him, so... I'll kill his minions, or his little allies. Oh, his lackeys. Even I was too nice by calling them minions. Uh, as you can see, I got hit. So while my horse is not really taking a whole lot of damage, I my, myself am. So you have to be careful. And here is... Yep. The big nasty with his 36,000 hit points, 37,000. As you can see, you know, I've locked on to him with the yellow targeting reticule. And since I am a, a ranged class, I can stay at a distance and do good damage to him. Uh, obvious, yes, the quest was instantly accepted. Once I approached the warband, it just automatically populated onto my log on the right side of the screen there, and we got to start killing, so, and we apparently knocked him off his mount, so I can't imagine he's too happy. Yep. No, we dismounted him, and he's almost a goner here. And he's dead. There we go, so, there's the actual quest right there, it was a level 79, uh, rewards, a legendary item experience and silver tokens of the Rider Mark. Now, mm -hmm. these don't auto-complete, do they, or do we actually have to go to an they, NPC? They would. We're, we're still in beta. Okay. So uh, the, the, yeah. these will also auto-complete. They just haven't for us. Uh, good question. Mm -hmm. What happens if your quest uh, tracker is full? Is there like an overflow that it'll go into, or do you just got to make sure that you have room in your quest log? Sure. So this is going to be a different kind of quest. Uh, we're going to see if we can, you know, set up some additional space for it so that you can pick them up on the go. Um, definitely the kind of thing, you know, we're playing with a lot of stuff when we're going into beta like this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got to mess with, you know, what are the rewards? Are they good? You know, how do your mount skills feel? Um, how are we managing your quests? You know, how are we sharing out experience when you're, you know, uh, attacking various creatures? All this kind of stuff. Looks okay. like somebody wants to join us. Not a problem. I was just, uh, someone found us in game and sent me a tell and wanted to know if I could ask uh, how we get new horse outfits for the war steed. New horses? Is that it? Or you cut off there. I'm sorry, I cut out there. Yep. Uh, new horse outfits for the war steeds. Sure. Um, so the, the outfits you're wearing, uh, there's actually seven parts to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to. Um, uh, yeah, I want to get them killed with bear. I'll, yeah, I'll show up, open up the UI. <laughs> And the, uh, basically, you're going to have traits for those. So you can earn those uh, in-game, playing through quests, uh, getting reputation, uh, and then use those various pieces, parts, to build the outfit you want for your character. Um, so really what you're doing is kind of applying barding to your mount. So, and I guess the... You so said the blue ones were the ones that were already in game, and the green ones were. You know, I, I was I was going through it. A ton of the green ones have really nice art with them as well, too. So, okay. feel free to mix and match there. Let's see. And there's also we can kind of change them ourselves manually up here as well. Oh, actually, open the store. As you can see, you're going to be able to change the colors on those as well. Uh, so you'll be able to not only change out the items that are on you, but you can dye them. Yeah, and then we can go up here. That looks like a... I don't think it's the body and the legs are working right now for the dyeing, but the head, I can change the dye on it. Nope, just let me do the body. I kept clicking on it, try, kept trying to send me to the store. See if there's anything for the tail. Wow. 
So I just went from like a double axe on my flanks to, as you can see, a, a shield and a sword here, which uh, I kind of like. So we're going to change the outfit. And there we go. Now I'm a brownish color with a sword and a shield. And Jawahi, yes, there are different color dyes. Yep, so you definitely can get, um, Fredolus, you can get uh, the corresponding parts for Steed of the Night. Uh, for example, if you've bought that already in the, uh, in the Lotro store, uh, when this comes out, uh, the pieces for the Steed of the Night, all that gear is going to be available to you. Uh, you can basically build your own. So what's with these white hand banners? Are there some white hand orcs running around protecting these? Or oh, here we go. Yep, for a lot of this stuff, you're going to have quests from the basically the uh, the local reeve, right? Okay. The local settlements are going to have uh, their own problems and their own needs, uh, and you're going to be dealing with the different sort of societies here in Rohan. Um, each of them have their own hierarchy, their own history, their own banners, uh, you know, heraldry, right, their own leaders, their own problems. There's a quick stop. I could have used that earlier. So that'd be the minus key on your bar, then it looks like there's a charge for the plus. Now this is a little bit different because I was playing a, mm -hmm. a more of a melee based character yesterday and I had sure. where I could actually charge through uh, the enemy and do a lot of damage to him that way. Sure. Now, since this is more of a, a ranged character, I don't have those heavy melee abilities. Well, you still have the spur on skill, which basically lets you charge directly at your opponent, okay. right? And you still have flay open, which is a, a really heavy duty melee attack. Um, and I think we haven't talked too much about sort of the, the importance of maintaining speed, but the, you know, the red bar there, uh, that's your fury, right? You build fury <laughs> as you move quickly, uh, and you can use that sort of as a passive boost to your damage uh, and to healing, or you can just you know unload all that in some in one big attack uh, and crush your opponent with it. And I just got a new deed. Got an Orc Slayer of Eastern Rohan, and I got a chunk of high grade Scarn Ore. Apparently, he was a miner. Is there? Where, mm -hmm. I got separated from you. I'm going to find I'm, I'm you. Following, I'm following along. Oh, are you? You want to try I'm, and find I'm some... Over you. I'm I try think. And... <laughs> Actually, it looks like you're ahead of me if I'm reading the map right. Yeah. I'm going to try and find some more uh, war bands to show off. All right. Well, one thing we don't have in beta yet, and it will be out there, uh, we're going to be adding basically... Uh, warband trackers across the map, so you can watch them as they proceed, uh, and they're going to roam really long distances, right? So sort of from the top of the map to the bottom of the map, they're going to be okay. all over the place. So uh, they are going to be a pretty prevalent feature. They're not going to be like a rare spawn type of deal or anything like that. Well, they're going to be a rare in the sense that their their skills are going to be pretty unique, and they're going to be you know pretty nasty to tangle with. Okay. But they um they are going to also be something that you know it's going to be out there you're going to be able to think of them as kind of a of a mobile quest objective and kind of ride out to meet them okay there you are found you apparently i'm faster than you are i made some big my way, way south uh, someone asked how was i speeding up it's just uh it's a wasd or you can use your left and right mouse is which i'm controlling with right now and I just got it floored. And as you can see, the bottom, since I'm going full speed for so long, like Aaron talked about, the bottom red bar is completely filled up, and this is kind of like going to help me do additional damage to my next attack. And wow. Good hit. Yeah. <laughs> did, did I GM hit him, or did I just get a huge crit no, off? No, that's, you got a huge crit off. That's, that's the the bonus of fury. That's why you want to maintain speed. Yeah. Oh. So I can tell you that this is something that I could spend quite a bit of time doing, just running around and killing these wargs from range.
But I need to work on some of the more closing in and trying to get like a finishing hit with them. Oh, he had 16 hit points and lived. <laughs> he escaped you. Oh. So, all PV... Is there any kind of upgrades or changes to the PvP systems coming in anytime soon? Yeah. That's one of the questions uh, that's been asked. There, there absolutely are. In fact, we've got... Um, oh, we're finding all kinds of new stuff. The uh, <laughs> We've got a, a dev diary from uh, JW Barry coming out this week. He's going to talk about that a lot. Okay. Um, but the, the primary thing that, that you're going to see there is um, really a focus on um, the PvP aspects of it, on the player fighting aspects, and not so much on the, oh, I've got to wade through, you know, 14,000 NPCs to get to my next objective. All right. So there you go, Lotro. That's... Got a punctured shield. You got all kinds of a trophy gathered from a corpse. Trophy's gonna be sold to me. Oh. <laughs> got a wooden post here. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, oh, there you are. All right. I'm gonna track you down. You're yeah. So it's what I. I feel for Anang here trying to follow us around. <laughs> Real quick, I just wanted to show people uh, something that I picked up. If you. Look over my shiny head right there. I've got a, a banner from Rohan. It's pretty neat. Just thought I'd show it off to everybody. Also blew up the uh, playing field so they can see it just a little bit better with this view. So are there any traditional, you know, hey, I'm I'm a farmer out here and uh, probably a little bit on the outskirts where I shouldn't be, but I'm having problems with the right-hand archers. Can you go kill like 20 of them for me and come back? <laughs> so you're going to have a mix of stuff, right? Um, a lot of the, the quests that are out here are going to be driven really by uh, that epic story, right? The story of the Fellowship. I mean, we're, we're, we're deep into the two towers here. Um, we've got so much going on that relates to the breaking of the Fellowship. Uh, Boromir, Gandalf the White, Treebeard, um, all that good stuff. Um, but we're also going to dig into the, the local environment, the local politics. Um, and so there's some, some twists to it. For example, uh, the king has said you can't kill orcs. Uh, so what are all the local nobles going to do about it? So am I not supposed to be killing the, these guys? Well, you know, that's, that's your, your choice. I think it's probably in general a good thing to be killing orcs. But yeah. uh, the, the, the king may not be right about that one. I know he's a little crazy about this time frame, so... Do you want to show some of the new environments? Because I know that you have quite a few that we went through yesterday, and some of them are just absolutely stunning, so I want to make sure that we get a chance to... Absolutely. ...give them their uh, due time in the sun. We're, we're going to dance around a little bit here. Um, I think we'll uh, wave farewell to Anang and, and wish him well. Uh, Huggy, I've got agile fingers. <laughs> So let's see what we've got. So there are four main areas really that are, are focused on mounted combat. Uh, we have Norcroft, Suckcross, we have the Wold, uh, and we have the Antwash Vale. So I'm going to take us a bit west into Antwash. Oh, look at this. I got a Champion's Greater Hammer of the Third Age. There you go. Any champions out there that need a hammer? Two handed? 114.3 DPS. Hmm. You put me in the middle of a lot of really mad cows, it looks like. <laughs> Level 82 cows, yes. Watch out for the bull there. I'm going to back up here. <laughs> Walk slowly away. They want to know if you could GM out at the daytime so they can see the environments better. Yeah, unfortunately that would require me to do it for the whole server, so yeah. I'll that yeah. up right now.
but if you come down this way, actually, to the river, you can see really the uh, I know, starlight reflected off. Um, I don't know how clearly that comes uh, across the video right now. Uh, yeah, you're I don't, let me fire. stop here real quick. <laughs> and you can actually see the ripples of my horse stopping. So I don't know if you guys can see this. I hope you can if it's coming across. But there's, you know, this little marsh right here. You can see the stars reflecting down on the mirrored surface of the water. And there's, I couldn't see it because it's a mirror, but apparently the water got a little deeper there. Yep. <laughs> and that water effects uh, in this build are just absolutely amazing. <laughs> I cannot uh, stress how impressed I am with the water. I don't think I've seen it better in another game. So, yeah, Jackie this is on DX11. So, a question about uh, uh, Mount of Combat and such. Um, Mount of Combat is um, spread really throughout Rohan, um, so you're going to get a good bit of questing that way um, all over the place. Uh, but there are certainly camps where, you know, a horse just isn't going to work, right? There's not space for it. Um, and there are certainly are places such as Fangorn where it just wouldn't be practical. Uh, so there absolutely is unmounted questing as well, sort of your, your traditional questing. So there's a good one. Do you uh, plan on, or have you guys already announced how many books are going to be in the Writers of Rohan expansion, or is that something that's still... Oh, goodness. Uh, um, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, good. The, the, the epic story is really long. Uh, six, eight, I don't know. It's a, it's a big one. I just attacked a very angry level 84 bird. <laughs> so let, let's jump you down a little bit further. Um, it's one of my favorite places, which is uh, the town of Snowburn. That sounds good, because uh, this bird's going to kill me if you don't. <laughs> We're moving. Uh, yeah, obvious. I'll open up the traits for the war seed. Sorry about that. And actually, once he, yeah, I might, actually, what am I talking about? I'm not going to die. No, you're not going to die. Let me kill this ward. Let me go negative hit points, but I'm not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of the joys of doing one of these walkthroughs, right? Yeah. We give you unlimited powers. So. It's always fun to see how negative we can go on the hit points where it just becomes absolutely ridiculous. Um, oh, yeah. I was opening up the UI here. The You're UI right. for the mount traits for you and got zipped away. It'll be right down. Here we right go. Down. Okay. So here's the mounted combat traits. As you can see, I've already got quite a few points spent, 85. Uh, I don't have any available. The majority of mine are spent into the medium tree. There's you know, a light tree and a heavy tree. Uh, and you're going to be able to choose one of those at a time. So you're going to spend in the light or the medium or the heavy. Mm -hmm. But not all three at the same time. But will I be able to have different trick specs so we can spec our horse differently, That's correct? But all those configurations for, are for on the right, absolutely. Yeah. So you could have a build out, I guess, for each different light, medium, and heavy if that's what you really chose to do, huh? Completely. All right. Or, you know, it's sort of multiple heavy trees if you want to, or whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, you're, you're, I wouldn't expect that you're going to have enough points to fill out an entire tree, uh, unlike what, what we've done tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But as you level up your, your mount, your mount gains experience, and you're going to get additional points for the trait trees. Okay, so what will be the point cap for the horse trait trees? Um, I would guess somewhere in the neighborhood of being able to fill out two of those three trees. Um, I, it's again one of those beta things that okay. will through what works. Gotcha. Let's look at some of the final skills. Conservative combatant, you're skilled at conserving energy and are able to expend less energy when performing certain skills. 
Benevolence, a generous and honorable individual, you enjoy helping those in need, which increases their benevolence towards you. For the hunter, uh, your skills will apply an effective boost incoming and outgoing healing. And flay opening, seeking arrow, noble arrow, speed of, or spread of arrows. Hobble, your war cry, strikes fear into the heart of your enemies, frozen with fright, those struggle to escape your onslaught, so it unlocks the skill Hobble for you. And shields will be splintered. For the hunter, you'll utilize the disciplined Red Dawn that skills will reduce enemy armor and inflict bleed upon critical hits. So that's like the heavy, you know, pinnacle skills that you'll have with that horse for as a hunter. As far as how many trait specs you get, I'm sure that's something that they're still internally deciding. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still working through that. We're still figuring it out. As you can see, everything's yeah. unlocked in, in beta right now. Uh, and that's not just sort of the, the admin uh, interface. That's, you know, the way we set it up right now. So, you know, we'll, we'll get through to, to more of those details later on. Yeah, so, so for those of you guys that are asking about if it's going to cost you turbine points to refund your points or... At what trait specs, you know, are you going to have to start purchasing them? Those are answers they really don't have right now. So I'm not trying to ignore the questions, but they're just not ones we're going to get answers because this is still going to be in beta for at least but another six, eight weeks. So I'm sure that's stuff they haven't come to a conclusion upon yet. But uh, as far as are certain horses going to be better for certain classes, I mean... Let's see, for the light mounted combat for the hunters, while utilizing Discipline Red Dawn, 10% uh, more likely to critical hit, so an increased critical hit. Uh, this is a feign, so I can, it's an aggro dump. Uh, motivation through aggression. 10% chance to restore, 10% of morale, 10% of steed endurance. Mm -hmm. So it's a group wide buff. While utilizing Discipline Rider Mark, the following skills have a 20% chance to instantly dismount the target when they critically hit, so you can dismount. So this is more some kind of CC and buff type things in the yep. light tree. So I mean, so much, much as, as it is, you know, we talked about the disciplines, I think, in some of our dev diaries and such, right? You have Red Dawn, which is all about damage. You have Rohirrim, which is all about uh, defense, healing, survivability. Uh, and you have Ritter Mark, which is all about sort of these utility skills, so mixing up uh, my control skills, and you know I, I want to be able to dismount my opponent, and I want to be able to to really manage uh, how I play with them, whether I'm sending them off with the fear or what I'm doing with them. Um, and then those are spread out as different types of skills and different trees, uh, so you can pick your tree based on uh, what the you know some of those skills that you enjoy and, and you know, enjoy playing with. Uh, you can go for light because hey, you go faster, you earn fury faster you're going to do more damage right just raw damage uh the you can play on which one uh feels better in terms of sort of its, its riding characteristics right uh, which one turns better uh so you know a little slower may be a little bit better for that uh if if you know making those tight turns or wheeling around to attack your opponent is 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 not working uh it's really going to kind of blend out on, on how you want to play it out and even even if you cho choose a light uh, light mount, for example, you can still choose some of the more survivability skills on it. Oh, we can't see it tonight, but there's a tower over here in the background. Let's see if we can slowly wander up on it. This is the outside wall of Sutcroft's. Did I say that right? Kind of right? Yep. There we go. Pretty close. <laughs> I don't know. The, the um the a lot of the origins of the word are are more uh, Nordic here, especially. Mm -hmm. So you know when I started talking about Hutbold, which is our uh, sort of our end game town that you're going to be rebuilding, um you know our our uh, lore folks kept telling me, okay, Aaron, I make sure you use your your Swedish chef voice when you you put that together. Um you know we got to you got to get the right accents in it, and I, I'm I'm not always great with the the double O's and the umlauts. Is that something you actually wanted to talk about? Is the uh, phase city that the players can Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So we've got this whole uh, Rohiric outpost. Um, there's a mass of quests, and I mean, I'm just huge number of quests that are associated with it. Uh, and you're going to be able to basically travel across 
uh, Rohan, pick up quests with each of the various Reeves, uh, and build their trust, earn their basically supplies, uh, and bring it back to Hupel to help rebuild this outpost. Um, as you rebuild this town, uh, you're going to get access to brand new sets of armor, brand new gear, uh, and you're also going to have you know a, a city coming to life before your eyes. Uh, so definitely meant to be something that can be played. You know, over time you can do that. Uh, play solo quests. There are going to be group quests for it. Uh, a lot of options there. Uh, and we're we're really excited about it as something that that can play out. Uh, as an end game for the region, uh, but you know, not be, um, but but keep players give you a lot of choices of how you want to play into it, what you want to do with it. For those that ask, by the way, yeah, running around on these cobblestone streets with your war horses is a little bit like running on ice. So that's why I'm kind of running into buildings. I don't think yep. war horses were made to run through towns and make quick turns on streets. So. You know, all to be expected. And there's some more Defilers of the Flame, so we'll go ahead and all right. kill them, even though we're probably not supposed to. <laughs> there we go. Is the town that you were just talking about, because I can't say its name, is, is, that, <laughs> in the, is that in this build-out? Is that something we can go take a look at in its early stages right now? Uh, oh. Before it starts, you know, before we have to start working to build it back up? Sure. Um, can head northeast and see if we run into it. Agamemnon. Yeah, that's that town is going to be dynamic for the players. So just, I, that's one of the questions I asked yesterday. It's like, well, if I don't, never take part of that, then like two months from now, I decide that that's something I want to do. I'm not going to roll up and the town's just already going to be built. And it's like, well, I guess I missed that party. It's going to be unique to the individual player. So as you partake in building the city back, it's what stage of the city being built you'll see it as. So we're headed out here, we're headed uh, northeast, uh, across the Sutcrofts. Uh, we're coming up on the east wall here, which is just basically a massive ridge of stone uh, on the eastern borders of Rohan. Uh, so it starts to get a little more rocky, a little more ridgy, tall, um, certainly more group quests uh, in that direction, uh, and a lot more in the way of, uh, I think, some of these story spaces, right? Some of the, the, some of the experience of the Fellowship is up there as well. Oh. So here we go, a burned out water wheel, right? Oh, you meant to stop. I'm like running by, like, haha, you ran into the water and fell. <laughs> no, no, you meant to stop. I, I ran into the water. I, you know, I can, I can say I didn't. Okay. The, uh... Uh, so, here's a, a question that's come through a couple times as we're looking at this burnt out water wheel. So, this is you know, the outskirts of the city. Yep. Uh, how will pet class characters work while they're on their mount? The uh, pet's going to get their own little mini mount running behind? Obviously, probably not, but. Sure. So, uh, captains, lore masters, uh, with amount of combat for right now, you're you're not going to have your your pet falling along behind. Um, you're going to have skills that are really specific to your class, uh, so you're going to have those abilities. Uh, but you know the heralds are not going to be joining you uh, in amount of combat. No matter how much they want to. Exactly, They're, they haven't been trained by the Rohirrim. Uh, that bog lurker is just not good enough right now. So soon, <laughs> maybe yeah. someday, learn to ride a horse. There we go, quick stop. Right. And he disappears in a cloud of leaves. So I can get, think you can get a sense of sort of the outline of the place right now. You know, the burned out uh, buildings and the old stone walls. Soup crofts. Right, I'm trying. <laughs> hey, there's some people hanging out. So you'll see some of them uh, phasing in and out right now. I guess they're more like ghosts than anything at the moment. Oh, I see. No one gave them the memo. Santa Claus is still hanging out there. <laughs> and I call him Santa Claus, by the way, because he actually looks kind of like Santa Claus. 
Alright, <laughs> let's leave him alone before he realizes he's dead. And he tries to haunt us or something silly. Right, so let's see, what else have we got out there? It's a massive region. I don't want to give everything away right now, but um I understand. <laughs> Why don't we head out just to the edge of Fangor? Sounds good. Obvious, do you mean like is the questing going to level as fast as the ROI quests, or...? Oh, hey. I think I just hit something there. Very possible. How can we... what can we expect of like the leveling curve for mm -hmm. our... Are the, are the players essentially w how I guess you know it's really hard to predict how long exactly it's going to take a player sure. to get to level cap, but internally you, you probably have a target. What are you guys expecting to take people to get from seventy five to eighty five? Well, you know the um, certainly found for some players time is no object, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't worry about that too much. Um, exactly. You know, we want it to we want it to be an experience that that you can enjoy that'll take some time um, you know I you know multiple hours per level certainly um, we want you to feel like you're progressing as you move through the hubs you know it's ten levels so there's a good bit there uh, so yeah you know I don't know 50 60 uh, multiple hours many hours okay <laughs> It's an interesting thing for for folks that play MMOs. Mm -hmm. Saying big numbers tends to tends to be a better response. Yeah. Uh, and for folks that don't, saying big numbers makes them go, "You what?" Yeah. You know, oh. when I say there's like you know three thousand hours of gameplay in the game, it uh, it, it tends to to confuse them. Uh, you can see we're right on the edge of a, a Fangorn forest here. Oh, go ahead. Crack. Oh, I guess I was just going to say comparatively, like say. The level from 65 to 75, would you expect it to be comparative or a longer experience? Because I guess that's just you know how a good way for your yeah. the players of your game. I'd, to I'd expect it to be a, um, a it's going to take a little longer than it did from but I also to expect it to, We want, still want you to feel like you're progressing, right? You don't yeah. want to just feel like you're you're sitting still and nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. That would be boring. There we go. What about the horse? I noticed that. The horse itself is gaining experience. How many is is it? When we get the horse, is it essentially like a level one yeah, war you're steed? Yeah, you're gonna have a level one war steed, right? And the um, what you're gonna find uh, actually one thing is that we're, we've really dialed up the experience on the mount right now mm -hmm. in beta um, for testing purposes, so it goes really fast. Okay. Uh, we're gonna be scaling that back as we go along. Yeah, I know they just gave me mine and already had 85 points. I don't know what's over that. <laughs> so, I've got 161 item XP, 161 steed XP, and then my mount level has changed to 15. So, since you know we've been playing, I've already gone to level 15. Yeah, exactly. It's a uh, you know it's dialed way up right now. Uh, for the person, for the people that are asking about the other classes, the only character that's on this account right now on the server is the hunter. So, unfortunately, this is the only class we're going to get a chance to look at this evening. Well, here's a good question. Um, obviously, since you're upping the level cap by 10 levels, that's going to have a pretty decent effect on the current level of gear. And I know there's a number of people out there, to include myself, that are really uh, get deep sure. in crafting systems. Uh -huh. Do you have any anything you can talk about as far as how the crafting system is going to work in the next 10 levels? Are we going to see new items come out, new resources to be gathered? We will definitely see new level uh, new items we'll definitely see new crafting levels um, and we're gonna see uh, full armor sets as well uh, which is something that the crafting crafting developer uh, we've got somebody brand new on it uh, for this cycle and she's very excited about making it a big deal 
uh, and really finding some of the places that maybe we, we weren't fully served before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, uh, tanks, uh, rejoice. You're going to get some attention. Uh, you know, full armor sets coming out. It's going to be, we're going to do this well. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so if she wants to have some deep conversations, you're more than welcome to give them her, my Skype handle, and we can talk about crafting. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big fan of the, actually I was a big fan of the crafting system upon release, and the ability to add items, and you have a chance percent to crit, as opposed to just randomly, mm -hmm. and then building better crafting materials, and then getting your scrolls, so I always thought that was a really a good system, so... Look what we got here. Some heartwood. There you go. Making out some group mobs. Got some split branches. Speaking of... Oh. Ashlim. I don't think he likes us yet. He's got a gray ring. Now we're just a little too young. I'm not big and mighty enough to talk to this, uh, uh, this quest giver. <laughs> Mounted, mounted combat in a forest seems iffy. Yeah, it's probably a little tricky. Yeah, no, it's it's actually very iffy. So you'll find that the vast majority of, of uh, Ease of Fangorn, for example, uh, mounted combat is just disabled. This isn't going to happen. There you go. It's a one-time only deal, people. <laughs> we have to run around the woods on a horseback and kill skirmishers and trees. Yeah, it's, it's your one attempt to get, uh, to, to get one up on the horns over there. Getting a good charge attack. I'll have to get back in there. Alright. I think he's dead. Ooh. Hey, there's a jeweler recipe. I don't know if it's a new thing, but... I'm trying to find a... That's a root. I don't want to kill a root. <laughs> I don't want a root. It's anticlimactic. Give me a... I don't want a bat either. <laughs> there we go. There's my tree. Whoosh. I need axes. Axes and fire? Yeah. Now then they're definitely not going to like you. Probably not at all. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um... Mm -hmm. Are there going to be, like, player instances where they will be able to use their War Street, you know, other than a ri the original Quest Hub where you... Sure. Yeah, well, we're very much starting out right now with uh, Mount of Combat as something for Rohan, for On the Landscape, okay. um, just because it requires so much space, right? You're, yeah. It may not really be apparent, but you're going at easily two to three times the speed of existing mounts. So you're you're moving, right? And when you, you put that into a... Uh, a constrained space, you see it really quickly. Um, I am fully expect we'll, we'll branch that into a lot more story instances. We we love that kind of thing. We love that those scripted stories and those uh, those group encounters. I, I'm just having a real fun time doing this. And one of the things that really jumped out right away to me yesterday was, you know, the actual heft of the horse. You you could feel it when your your momentum carrying you forward and through a turn. And, uh, it's really not as responsive, <laughs> you know, like a horse would be. Right. You're not just going to say, okay, I turn. And, well, and I think that'll be a bit confusing to folks, especially at first. Um, a lot of the play feedback so far has been, what this feels really uncomfortable, right, when people start out, and then they spend a little more time, and it gets okay, I think I have a, a sense of this. And then they start to say, wow, this is fun. Right? Wow, I'm digging into this. Okay, I've, I've specced up in my traits a little bit, and I've got some more maneuverability, and I, I, I have some idea of the skills I like, and, you know, it, it comes together. But uh, it, it is not standard and deliver combat. It is not um, really what you're used to in Lotro today uh, because it incorporates speed. And so it incorporates some of that... Uh, you, you have to take a little planning. You have to think about it. You have to be able to bank and turn and, and come back at your opponent. Not that we would ever want to see it happen to them because they're such fine creatures. I have noticed that I take a lot of damage while my horse himself takes 
very yep. little. I think we'll uh, be balancing that out as well in terms of um, how much is going to hurt you and how much is going to uh, hurt your horse. Yeah. The, um, your mount, really one of the worst things that can happen to you in mounted combat is to be dismounted. Right? That is the last thing you want to happen uh, because your opponent is then going to have all those speed multipliers. Your opponent is going to have uh, typically some kind of a, of a, a bonus against unmounted opponents. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you're going to lose a lot of those big damage skills that you get that are, you know, class skills, but are really the mounted skills uh, that come up on that, um, that basically that context sensitive quick bar. Let's see. There you are. I think I'm going to try and get to a safe area and show off some more of the different skins. While I right, do well, definitely like the small shield on my horse's rump, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of other things I know we could show us, too. I can't... Mm -hmm. I, keep hitting, <laughs> I walk right well, there, there's a load screen. Is there like an yeah. invisible barrier there? Well, when we get into the uh, an area where we've set up... A, basically, as, as areas get loaded up, we have a, a layer to the world so we can make sure the performance stays good. Oh, okay. So, bounce into that little wall, you'll have a, a, a blip as you come into the layer, and then you can continue onward. I totally understand. Let's take a look here at some of the different appearance items. So, go ahead and throw this on the gear. There's just some saddlebags. Some skins. My axes are back. Now, see, that's what I should have had running around through the woods. I don't know what I was thinking. We go ahead and change up the tail here a little bit. Actually, I don't know that he had a tail <laughs> before. <laughs> I had a tailless horse. We're going to buy a war goat. Let's see. And now his tail just got it. Oh, just changed the color. Let's scroll down here. Change the feet, turn the legs, and some wraps. Since this is going to be one of your new best friends, you better get them stylish. So the Customize other customize it out the way you want it exactly. So, so the other war horses don't make fun of them. I guess these are saddles. Same as saddles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, there we go. Yeah, and the, uh, the one of the things that's not showing in this build right now is you're going to be able to change your, the color of your horse's coat as well. Uh, so be able to get that base layer down there, uh, really set them up. Uh, and yeah, Kane, the, uh, there are dyes for all those different types of barding, so you can set a color on it. Hmm. Where do I... Put that one at. Oh, okay, gotcha. If you take any of the hide colors right now, you're just going to turn your mount white. <laughs> no, I was uh, I was looking at the like the the body coverings, and I didn't quite sure. notice where they went. So we had quite a fair different. Oh, look at that. That's a cool one. I think that might be the one I originally started off with. Looks very. So there, there are options in here for role players. There are options in here to kind of match the context of your, uh, you know, your class or your your play style, and uh, different directions you can go. If you're feeling a little more evil. There's a full bone set. Really? Yes. Must Look have. for looking for bone armors. So you can drag them over. Did you put it? Did you give it to me? Oh yeah, you've got them. Oh, I should say must have. All right, let's see. Light leather, raven, otter. I'm trying to find the bone one, and just I was reading about people light haul through the woad, but I don't want you guys to think that I actually have to read out loud to. <laughs> <laughs> read, but a heavy halter, the Intwash, Hunter's halter, Minstrel's halter, Red Guard Elite halter. 
Minstrel's Halter, Heavy Halter of the Sutcrofts, Heavy Metal Halter, Captain's Halter, Parted Main, Flowing Main, D&T Mounted Appearance Test. Hmm, let's try that one. Oh, he's white. You sure can you give me the bone, or am I just, uh... There oh, we I, go. I know, there we I know go. there are bone armors in there. there. It's always the last place you look, isn't it? There you go. The bone and the elven leaf go good together. <laughs> you can mix and match if you choose. I think we might have to have a whole new category of the eyesore award from yeah. uh, the fashion maven for worst dressed war steed. Had that be a screenshot uh, contest one day. Have your community team mm -hmm. get all over that one. It, well, currently when we grant you that award, we just give you a, a uh, canvas sack to put over your head. Yeah. It's not a whole lot of fun, is it? Having wing. Exactly, the horse maven. I'm just making everybody look at all of them before I actually click on them. <laughs> there we go. Not this time. Bone gear. I don't know if we have bone gear actually. Let's we'll see. Uh, there are a lot of good pieces in there though. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like these. Oh, there's some of these that are populated. Certainly, certainly have some class specific pieces in there. Yeah. Okay, well, I like my hand axes anyways. No bone, t bone tail. Oh, there it is, bone tail. All right, so I got a bony horse. Strike fear into the heart of the enemies. So, what kind of horse gear will they start off with? At the, you know, uh -huh. for a cosmetic, just a kind of a plain Jane outfit that they can change the yeah. color on, and the rest will be earned through deeds and quests and. Exactly, you're going to start out with a with a pretty plain. Uh, war steed, and you know, if you had in the past picked up, for example, the steed of night or one of the class steeds, you'll have some pieces there uh, related to those uh, those former sets. Uh, but really, as you're adventuring through Rohan, as you're building that reputation, uh, you're going to be picking up pieces that are specific to the different regions of Rohan, uh, the different uh, reeves, and the different uh, you know heraldry and cultures of the, of the groups you're working with there. Uh, so you'll be picking those up as you play. Apparently, I found a group mob up here, I think. No. Nope, where are you going? Man, he's just an elite. Yep, gotta watch those Oryx, they're pretty nasty. some good velocity. Alright. I've seen a couple interesting bugs in beta. My favorite one was almost literally a flying mount. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yesterday we're running around and we get to the racetrack where we proceeded to the race and I won. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it was tight. You get, to, you get to play with the game every day so really you're the one that wins. But anyways, we were racing on the racetrack and we're getting up there, and I promise not to release the screenshots or video of it. But there's just this white horse that's floating about 10 feet above the stables. I guess he apparently was too good for the stables. And he was flying in the air, so that was pretty funny. And then I saw another one where it looked like there was a steel braid bridge going across a river, which really wasn't there. But other than that, I, even in an early beta build, I didn't see too many bugs.
How does the goblin hopping on the back of your horse work that was mentioned in someone else's preview a few days back? Oh, yeah, there it is so again. This is what I was talking about. Remember I told you yesterday about the steel braided sure. bridge? It's on the live stream right now. There you go. Yeah, wow. Oh, there it is. No, that's... That might physically be there. Oh, okay. Because it looks like it's supporting the... You know, like a, a, you'd put a right. bridge on it or something. Mm -hmm. Nope, couldn't tell you. There's certainly, with quest dates, right, we have things that'll phase in and out of the world mm -hmm. um, as you play through uh, content, so people, buildings, all sorts of stuff. Alright, so there you go. That could be a bug. It could not be a bug. If not, it's, <laughs> it's live in beta right now, so they do exist. We probably should get back on our mouse to fight this guy. <laughs> this fisherman's just oblivious. He's like, eh. Whatever. It's just, yeah, no big deal. It's just a war game, okay. I'll steal your well. boat. Oh, wow. Where did I just go? <laughs> you stole his boat. Oh, hey. I'm on the eaves of Fangorn. Am I supposed to be here? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. There's Treebeard's Hill. We're a little uh, south and to the west of it, mm -hmm. right here. Let's go. Uh, let's go say hi. Let's go see if Treebeard's around. Sure. As you'd expect, Fangorn is a pretty gnarled and uh, and twisted place. Yeah, it's not a lot of maneuverability in here. <laughs> Tarnished crest of Rohan, T TBD. <laughs> it's the. Uh, the things you that you've got to love about uh, beta itself, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, where did I go? The map is not going to tell you. No, I would, well, it's gonna <laughs> trying to find a way to get around this. <laughs> there we go. Anything that you guys can talk about, possibility of an open beta before the launch? Or is it going to be closed right up until the launch? Yeah, I'm expecting a closed beta right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we'll certainly broaden it and, and send out a good number of invites as we get further along. Oh, we're not the only people who have found this place. Oh, look who's got, look who's here. Look at the white man. I say that because he's, he's not gray anymore. Sir, and I think that's probably a pretty good place for me to wrap up my time with you. All right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and talk to us about Riders of Rohan. Very glad to. All right. So, uh, go ahead. I was going to wrap it up for the stream. All right, everybody. I appreciate you coming out, and uh, I hope that we gave you a nice glimpse of what you're going to get to see in the upcoming expansion for Lord of the Rings Online. Um, we didn't get to answer all your questions. We didn't get to show all the classes, which you still got another six weeks of beta before it's going to come out. So this will be, uh, the video on demand will be on the Twitch site, and there will be a recap posted up on Friday. So if you didn't get to see it or your friends, you know, didn't get to see it, they'll be able to go ahead and watch it later on. So I appreciate you guys taking the time coming out, and you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.